Okay, so in this lesson we're going to do demos. We're going to take a look at many different various viewpoints. I'm going to draw large for you, draw small for you, follow along, draw with me, and let's now find and look for our proportions and hit our landmarks. And let's start to ingest all this information intuitively. So we'll look at it analytically, but we'll also draw with kind of an open mind, and then as we see deviations that are incorrect, we'll just correct them. And that's how you'll learn to draw. You combine what you know with what you believe to see. So believe in what you're seeing and then pair it to what you know. Okay? I'll be right back and we'll jump into some drawings. Okay, here we go. Let's do some demonstrations now looking at qualifying the head into knowing your proportions, which is really, by the way, very intuitive. We talked about two widths to three lengths, and we talked in front views and in back views, and in side views we looked at uh, more of a squarish, a little bit longer rectangle in the profile, and then three quarters was roughly the same thing where you combine a little bit of both and then using perspective. So here's a, a, a good disclaimer. I know this stuff backwards and forwards, but when I draw, I relate to what I see too. So I'm combining my knowledge, right, with actual visual information and what really guides the day for anybody drawing young and old with experience, with lack of experience is in terms of proportions, you're guided by what's given to you. Hope that makes sense for you. So you're guided by that which you're looking at. But it's good to have a standard model in our head and it's good to have uh, some ratios and, and some measuring devices that we can control all this information that's going on all at once. Okay, So know your proportions and then we're going to hit our landmarks. So I'm going to do some bigger demonstrations here and then we'll cut to uh, overhead shot and we'll do some smaller demonstrations and I'll just try to, again, always use a variety of media. Okay, so we'll keep these simple. We won't get into much detail at all. And that's what I want you guys to do out there for my classes and also for YouTube land is to keep these simple. So I'll give you some demonstrations. Okay, let's jump into our uh, first pose here. So we have male pose. And what do you notice about the pose? First thing we can analyze is he's about three-quarter, right? So he's looking slightly... Um, to the right and so the first thing I analyze in that pose is a little bit kind of a box. I'll have a box but then I'll kind of round it so here's where I'm discerning where that, that plane will be. So I'm going to start to find the oval of my model's head in a kind of a boxy ovoid kind of way instead of drawing a real hardcore box. I'm going to find that first through here bringing down where that chin I feel like is going to be through here. And if I miss it, I always go back and, and certainly you always want to correct your, uh, your proportions, your scaling. Okay? Then I'm going to bring down the neck in this view and through here. So right in through there, we'll bring down the neck, find that chin a little bit. Okay, so I've got a feeling for the dimension of the head. Now let's start to give it a little bit more, a, a, a slight more complexity to that. So I'm finding this gesture this way in this way. You see, that's the main gesture of the pose. And of course, he's looking outward. So we find that side plane again of our head, and our most basic formation is right behind the eyeball, okay, to where you see that shadow that's starting to emerge behind his brow. That gives us a good planar definition of where that pulls back in space. And of course, it's a little bit more temporal-like in through here. Okay, you see that? Then let's start to find our center axis of our model. So we're moving in perspective. So we have much more of the left side of the view of the head center down through. So there's the center axis of our model, right in through there. And that's going to help us. Now, the center of the head from the, the very top, right, top of the head, top of the cranium, to the very bottom, moving slot, just slightly tilted back in this direction, three-quarter. 
uh, top and bottom, then we have our eye line. And it's slightly skewed. It's not straight across, but it's slightly skewed this direction, moving back in space. So we feel that eye line moving in that direction. Center of the eyes, right in through there. Brow a little bit higher, in through here. You see the brow merging, right in through there. Okay. Bottom of the nose, so halfway from the top of the eye to, excuse me, the, the center of the eye to the bottom of the, the head or the chin. It gives us about a halfway movement right in through there. So we find the very bottom of our nose right in that direction. And then we find the half of this, we get the bottom lip in through there. That gives you a standard model to start to work from. And then I'll start to we'll give this a little bit more, just that we'll make it too complex. We'll give a little bit more. We'll see the brow coming in through here, okay? Then I'll start to feel that cheekbone starting to protrude. It has a nice arch cheekbone coming out. And then see how we dive in a little bit, quite a bit through there. And so you can bring this cheekbone over to here. See that? All the way over. So you can bring this up a little bit higher. And we can start to really dig into that side plane. Let's simplify this into a boxy formation and movement in through here. Okay. Right in through there, then we can start to bring this up a little bit for that brow and the arch of the eyebrow, which will be in through here. And then, of course, we've got this already sculpted right in through there. And then lastly, the ear really disappears into the darkness of the shadow. It's a pretty dark cast shadow I gave them uh, when I photographed these. And if you want to find that in perspective, remember, brow line over to the plane nose line over to the plane, and then they're going to go back. Remember, this goes back in perspective, right? This goes back in perspective, converging to a point, converging to a point. And that's why three quarters is so, I think, so exciting. They're here. So we can move back and totally find the ear line and through here, right from the brow to the to the bottom of the nose moving back. And so we're going to hit that ear. That ear will fall somewhere roughly right in through, right in through there. It feels pretty comfortable uh, in through there. And then we can start maybe we'll get the chin just a little bit of expression coming in like so. And maybe we'll give the eye area just a little bit of expression. We'll start to just shave that down a little bit in through there. And then we can block in the shadow tone in the head as well. If you want to do that, you can do that as well. And there we go. We've got our proportions. And we hit, hit our landmarks with our first one. Okay, let's move on to another one. Keep it simple. Okay, let's move on. Let's go for another one. All right, in this one, a little bit more challenging view to the model, into the uh, us, the artist, right? This one is a little bit more of our point of view looking above. Do you see that? So we see more of the top of the head. So the, the well, you look something like this in terms of its most simple form. Remember, go back to the simplest form if you get stuck. So it's like looking on, on the top of a box. So we're looking down. There's the top plane of the head. We can move this kind of sideways in this direction. So this is what we start to see when we see a view from above. So I could bring a little shoulder down. And so that's why the, the volumetric figure is terribly, terribly uh, important to our understanding and our knowledge of drawing. All right, so let's go with this head. So. If we're working here, we see above the model. And really, this approach, this is really volumetric head drawing for the most part. Okay, That's, that's something. That we're really doing the same thing, but we're isolating it with the, the head. And we're knowing our landmarks, and we're hitting, hitting our, hitting our um, knowing our proportions, hitting our landmarks. All right, so let's get our head coming in. Coming downward, so we see this as an oval. I already start intuitively to fill the center line in through here, so I'll start to mark in where his chin is in through here. 
I'll start to bring the jawline through this direction, then up like so. So the back of the head, the back of the head starts to emerge here in this direction. We see a little bit more of the cranium, this movement coming down and through here, and it will already start to thrust the neck down. We always want to consider the neck in our poses, neck moving down this direction, this particular pose, and it has a cylindrical feeling in through here. Shoulder, I'll put a little shoulder in and through here and then back with the other other shoulder region in through there. All right, so let's figure out this three-quarter head. Let's know the proportions and let's get hit these landmarks. So side plane of the head is going to start to feel and emerge right in through this direction. So I want to find this top of my model. Very top kind of plane or part of the head right in through here around where the hairline is and then back in this direction we start to see that box start to emerge and then of course we're going to go hit the cranial structure we want to look, make it look more human we'll get the cranial structure and through there this blocks off just a little bit more and down through and through there all right so we've hit that side plane and we can start to bring this jawline down a little bit and then through and over all right so let's back up now and let's go and move and find our center line. So coming through the model, that center line is pushed over right through the middle of the brow, right through the center of that brow area, right in through there, down and through, curved and arch. It has a curved arch kind of feeling to it. So moving in this direction, down through where that chin is, over and through there. There's our center line, okay? Now let's find that all-important eye line center of our eye line. So we're roughly here at the top of the head to the bottom of the head, right in through there. About halfway through we'll start to find it moving in this direction, moving away from us, not quite horizontal, but at a certain tilt moving through. I think that's tough for students to get, that most of this information is not going to be now true horizontal anymore. Okay, it's going to have movement because of perspective. So we find the center of our eye line, we find the top of the brow, right in through here. Here's our brow coming through, okay, and over and down. We see that, that really gives us, starts to give that, that, that human look already. And we'll find the bottom of the nose halfway from the center line of the eye, bottom of the chin, okay, about right through there halfway, more of an angle. It's not the tip of the nose now, it's underneath that nostril, right about there. So the tip of the nose will linger in about right in through there. Here's what we're looking at. And if you miss it, you can recorrect it. It's not a big deal. And then the bottom of the lip, about right in through here. As you're, Remember, we're looking for a standard model. All right, so let's go in now and let's carve out the brow a little bit further here. That nice cut, and see how that brow protrudes, especially in the male. This comes down, let's keep it really simple. See how that angles in at the eye socket. That will angle in nicely moving in this direction. We can parallel that right over here. So you can bring this over at a slight angle. See how that parallels down this angle and that angle feel connected because they are connected. Brow, then through here, through there. Okay, and then we can start to bring this cheekbone through this direction. We can start to feel that, bring that over. See that rhythm in through here and around. Keep it nice and center, simple with our standard model. And we can bring his cheekbone down, down on under and through. Then if we want, let's pull down the cheekbone a little bit further. See how that, that nice shadow indents in and through here and moves over. We can feel that through here, through down to the cheek, down to the jaw. This will start to pull us back in this direction. So now we do get the feeling that we're looking down on from above slightly below the models below us and we get that nice feeling of the interaction with our model that way so I can 
shade this in a little bit. We won't even add the nose. We won't even add the lips. But I am going to add that racquetball feeling, right, to the muzzle of our model. Right in through. Feel that through there. You can hopefully you can see that well. Right in through here. And that gives us that nice rounded kind of it kind of looks like an ape at this point in time because of the simplicity. But of course, they we relate to many different animals. That's another good point. How interrelated we all are as as animals and mammal mammals. We can come down a little bit, bring this over, and I might elongate the chin in my drawing just a little bit in through here and then bring a little bit of this arc for the chin down and through center line. So our center line, we pick back up here, moving through, arching through this way, on over right and through, and then we get this nice turn in through here with our center line. Okay, you want to find the ear? Let's find the ear in this view. It's hard to see, but it's pretty low. So we bring the bottom of the nose line over to that side plane and then up and through, back in perspective. You've got to feel that perspective. If you haven't taken one two-point and three-point perspective, jump on that and, and re-familiar yourself with those contexts because they'll help in all of your drawing. So we feel that, we feel, remember the brow line over to the side plane of the head, remember right in through here. Here's our side plane all the way down, this deviates off that, it's the jaw, up in through here, side plane, moving back in space, this way. And so now we find our center, over, and we get the feeling of where the ear will start. Now, he has it a little bit lower, so I like to find if I'm if I'm if it deviates off, so this ear is a little bit lower. Again, trust what your eye sees and relate it back to what you know to help you with your standard model. And then we can start to see his ear emerge in this direction, down through and over, and there's the low attachment in through there. So we get a pretty accurate standard model, a pretty accurate read from knowing these proportions and these landmarks and then we can start to really add, add to them. Alright, let's we'll do a quick little shading. We'll shade down the eye, slice in through there, put a little shading on the muzzle, and then of course we can shade right through here and let's shade this back push that back we can give it a little 3d and that's all I'm looking for and you should be looking for in your understanding of this particular lesson this particular demonstration is know your proportions and to hit hit those landmarks and you'll be on your way to drawing ever more convincing heads let's move on to one more big one all right, and this one, this is even, I think, more challenging, is that now we're looking from our position is below looking up. A lot of times as a student in class, where your drawing chair ears is located, how high it is, if you're drawing a little bit higher or if you're sitting down lower like it's a stool or a chair, depending upon the model's orientation, that can be challenging. And I like to, to raise the model stand, even go on a ladder sometimes or go really low, have the model even lay on or sit on the ground, even in head studies. So students, all of you guys get lots of different points of view. So draw the head from every different conceivable angle and you'll really get a true feeling and measure of its, of its volume, which will help you. Okay, so let's go on to this one. Here we're looking up, up to the head a little bit. So that means that just in its most basic simple form, we're kind of like sort of a curved box if you think of it that way. I'll give a little bit of a side so we can make it a little bit more 3D, is now we're looking underneath like so. Okay, so we're slightly up under the head. Of course, the neck would start to come out, kind of like that. Okay, so that's what we're looking at in most, its most basic feeling. And of course, we get a side plane view of both 
of both the left and right. So the first thing we're going to look at in this, in this study, quick study here, is remember our proportions. Now you can bring this through if you want. Remember that kind of circular proportion, half of that, and then another, another half will help. Get, get that solid. He's going to be pushed up a little bit because uh, we're in a little bit skewed perspective since we're so low. So that will, this will get a little bit wider in through here. So we'll start to feel that, but we want to feel this oval, which is going to be a little bit more full now in through here. So his chin will start to raise up in through here. So I start to feel that as a little, little wider and a little fuller on through because of the point of view. Now we can start to bring down our center line in through this direction, right? So we have that. And let's also now bring in the neck, which is wider since he's a little bit fuller in terms of our view because we're lower. So we'll bring this neck down in through here, bring the neck down in through in that direction. The shoulders will start to emerge up and through in through there. We don't see a lot of it. Okay, so let's start to uh, hit our landmarks. So I'm through here. So we have the top of our head, okay, and we have the bottom of the head in through here. This starts to get arched just slightly up the other way with his chin direction in through with the jaw. That's going to be a certain change that we're going to start to see as we, as we start to move away and deviate more so from the, the standard model because later on we're going to get into you know very exaggerated positions and there's even more deviation and more and more perspective that takes off from that so we have our center line here let's find the all-important center of the eye line it's going to be pushed up a little bit since we're coming from our point of view is coming up in this direction so we're going to be pushed up a little bit and we're going to have more of an arch to our line so our center line of our eyes is going to feel a little higher and I'm going to give it more of a curve now coming off of that model that pose so we're starting to feel this the nose line we're starting to feel that the, the, the bottom of the lip see how much more angle that is and the chin straightens out a little bit and through there so we're going to feel the center of our eye line right in through here and we're going to start to I'm already going to hit the brow in through this direction right in through there, and I'm going to start bringing down the side plane here of our model and the side plane here of our model, right behind that eyeball, kind of where the, the eyebrow ends here on the right side. We're going to start bringing that down so we can start to really feel this side plane mm -hmm, on the left and this side plane here on the right too as well to feel that that movement of this getting shaved off and squared off a little bit, I think, is very important to, to realize and, and see. All right, so center of the eye line, bottom of the nose line is going to start to get pushed up. Okay, look how high everything is now. It's a little bit off and up from the standard model because of our perspective. So the nose line, the bottom of the nose line is higher. Right about right in through there, there's the bottom of the nose line, and look how much more arched it is, too, as well. So we come down, we fill the filter in through here, okay, and see that arch and angle, I'll just start to indicate it there for you. There's the top lip, bottom of the lip, right in through here. Smallish, narrow lips, right in through there. Now look at the cranial angle that this starts to give us. Look how arched over all that information is. So he's in a resting, Brian's in a resting position and the natural, it's kind of a, almost kind of a frown coming in through. And so I'll hit where the chin is. And still, I'm starting to rely even more so on my visual measurement as we get more off kind of the standard measurement models. And then of course we have our chin here moving in through it's got a little divot, a little cleft, I'll get that in there as well. And then we can start to bring in and bring in this side a little bit even further as we start to find 
his define and define his meet his features even even uh, more fully in through here. All right, let's find the ears. Look how low the ears are. So look how that tells you how how low we are in position to uh, the model's aspect. And I think that's very important. So I'll just tone in a little bit of this. neck in through here so we can see that. <laughs> so look how the ear, so if I, I take a measurement of where the bottom lobe is on the right here, it's underneath the end of this curve right in through here. Look how low, that's way, that's much, much lower than our standard, standard model, okay? It's like we could deviate even further from that. We can bring that over, the bottom of the ear is in through there. And the top of the ear now is where? It's actually below the nose line. So look how far we've moved off of from our standard model. How did that happen? How did we get from a clear, easy vision to something that's off of that? Well, we're in perspective, and we're using perspective. And so our point of view is much, it's much, much lower. So we're way down here looking up at. So that's very important as perspective starts to really begin to matter. We're starting to see something like this from here. So that really begins to take into an effect of your drawing. So now I feel like I've got a pretty good feeling for this and we can start to square off and angle off where we see that with our model. Right in through here. Okay, and through. It's like sculpting in a way. I mean, drawing and sculpting, I know they're very different, but I think of them in a similar kind of vein. Even though I'm not trained as a three dimensional artist per se. So we'll pull down that earlobe a little bit, that ear through there, just to give a little bit more definition. You can see that coming through. That's all going to be in shadow. Now, let's find a more uh, visually stimulating side plane in through here and a jaw plane in through here as well to help kind of finish off this simplified uh, model. So there's a lot of shadow patterns and we can eliminate them um, or draw them, excuse me, in their simple shape format. I don't want to get that complex. This is not the lesson for that. We'll get into light value in, in edges at another time. I want to look at structure, which is proportion, gesture, and, and then hitting those landmarks, right? So what I'm going to do is show you, I'm going to bring down this cranial shape. Remember, it's kind of rounded, right? And through here, rounded, in through here. And the best way to know this is just do mileage of drawings. Get your drawing mileage in. Bring that top lip over so you see that bottom lip through there. Start to feel that coming through. Now let's simplify this where the eye is here. Okay. Coming through. And then we're going to find that jawbone. This rhythm. Okay. Can you find that? This is important. This is more important than the features right now. Right in through here. Let's bring it over on the other side. Can we find it moving off the nose? In through. And through here you see that really pronounced, beautiful jaw bones coming through this model. It's a very chiseled profile, a chiseled uh, features in through here. And then we'll start to feel this coming over. Feel this coming back. That gives you that side plane that we're, we're looking for in our model. Structure. A structure over style, structure over detail always in your drawing until you master it. And we'll feel this jawbone starting to come down in through here. We start to feel that through. And let's start to feel now the other uh, jawbone. Now, symmetry is important. It happens a lot with attractive people. And if you're like me, then there's all kinds of asymmetry. I'm all over the place. <laughs> you get the idea. So you can bake on that symmetry, but uh, truly almost all of us have asymmetrical qualities which give us, I think, lots of character. That's my point of this. 
And so what I'm saying is this could, you could bring that right over to find the symmetry, and then you find all the detail to, to get off of or go off of the standard model and find your asymmetrical human kind of qualities. All right, so if we went just a slide further in through here with our shave, you know, our shaving kind of eye line coming in through here, we'd see that coming down a little through, and maybe we'd see the, the tip of the nose, see how, see how raised up it is, and we're seeing that as a ball, and of course later on this will get split underneath, and we'll see that tip underneath, so there's where the, the nose line, that bottom of the nose, right in through here, see how the nostrils come off this and move down, so if you're having trouble finding that hang on, basically it's where the nostrils end. Okay, I'll put that in there, and then we, we can get into a little bit of where the nose ends, in through here, and then see how it widens as it comes out a little bit here, and then it widens here as it comes through as well. I think that's important to notice and to see. It can widen in that point of view, and these can get stretched out in this plane, and that can get stretched out in through there. All right, so we've conquered now, I think, is an even more difficult view is looking from below, look, looking up at, and you can get some real dramatic kind of expressive drawings and paintings and photographs if you'll start to take chances and radically change your point of view. Okay, let's go on to some smaller studies. We'll use some graphite, some colored pencil, and uh, some pen. I'll do a few more of each one of those so you see that. Okay, let's go to those. Okay, let's do some smaller studies. I'm going to work in uh, graphite. I've got a B uh, lead here, so it's in between soft and hard, and I'm using the mechanical uh, pen here that, that holds the shaft in. So we'll do a few in graphite. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, we're looking at uh, super cool Sydney here, one of my students, and we've got a straight on kind of view. So let's take a, an effect of, of our measure of our head and drawing. All right, so we've got this kind of classic old, oval shape. We're gonna bring that down. Find the chin in through here, right about right in through here. I'll mark the chin in through here, a little rounder, a little wider at the top, a little rounder at the bottom in through, then a little uh, more curves in through here. And then we're going to bring down the neck a little bit further in through here, in through here a little bit, and then we'll bring down where that shirt is, kind of right in through. It's going to fall in through here. And just a couple angled lines for the beginning of the of the shoulder in through here. Okay, so we've got our proportions about again two, remember two to three. And so let's start to find take a fuller measure of of uh, the head itself. So we've got our center line coming down. You know, a lot of times when I'm drawing for myself, I may not draw all these things. They're they're ingrained in my in my psyche, in my drawing experience, but however, sometimes I need them, I draw them, and um, probably draw them more than, than I don't even, to, to, to be truly, make sure I'm truly honest. Uh, I think that's important to note for students, so use your, use your knowledge. So we have the bottom of the head here, top of the head here, make sure we know that, okay? And then let's find the center of our eye line, about right in through there, okay? There's the center of our eye line, our brow line is right in through there, okay? And I'm already going to start to feel the side plane of the head right behind the eyeballs, right in this area, okay? Right where the eye ends, the, the eyelashes coming over the top, folds of the eye about right in through there. That's where that side plane, that bony protrusion ends and we get to the side of the head in through here, it starts to emerge about right in through there. So we start to feel this, and of course we have hair in through there. 
kind of a hairline in through there. And let's feel it now on the other side, in through here, side plane. We see a little bit, maybe just a touch more of this plane in the other one in through there. Then of course we see a little hairline in through there and hairline coming up. So I include hair for sure, even my standard models, but it, you know, we're still taking a, a truer measure of uh, the effect of the, the anatomy and the structure of the head. Okay, so center of the eye line, let's find the bottom of the nose, halfway down, about right there. Maybe she's a little bit shorter, but it's about right in through there. Okay. And then we find our bottom lip, right into the bottom of the bottom lip. Make sure that we that we truly understand that that connection. So the bottom of the bottom lip, about right in through there. So we can start to say, we can come through here, find this cheekbone, that's a nice rosy roundness to that, and through here, and to bend over and through here. You feel that coming through and through there. Now let's find our ears from the brow over, okay, to the bottom of the nose and through here. They're somewhat hidden. So I'm going to draw now what I see a little bit. It's a little bit lower. I see this emerging just slightly in through here. That's about all I get through here. Okay, and about all I get down into here. Now we do see the lobe, the lobe emerging on the right. So see how much lower it pulls down. Right in through here and up and over. Something kind of like that we see a little bit with the cheek emerging in, in through there. Okay. All right, so I'll bring, to make give it a little bit more attention, I'll bring the hairline through in this direction. We're through here and down and over. You can see that. You can start to see a little bit more roundness, fullness in through here and in through here. <clears throat> Underneath the throat, you can go through and through here now. Okay, and then we'll find a little bit of the, the nose that starts to kind of square off on everybody in through here, that structural kind of quality in through here. We can start to see this come underneath, a little wider in through here, center line, wider in the nose. We can start to feel the nostrils in through there and then we can start to take a feeling of the eye sockets center of the eye line right in through here I could bring them down just a little bit always adjust as per needed don't be a slave to what what your what your standard model is deviate to what you're seeing to as well and then of course we can have jawbone coming in cheeks and jaw coming down and through here this gets softer and rounder and through there we can bring that over a little bit because so we want to keep her standard into a standard model so we're we're connecting both together right <clears throat> and we'll bring her kind of uh, eye socket into play and through here of course the eyeballs would be located inside here and their eyeball would be located inside this direction. I'm going to, the temporal lobe in the front here, the temple, we're going to start to feel this connection. I want you to start to feel, feel this in like that. And so, and this can split a little bit too as well. Okay. Then if we wanted to give, like I'll give, since the light source is stronger from the right, in this case, maybe I'll give a little bit of just a slight shading on this left side so we can see that and I can bring I'll bring the shape of that over and through and just do a quick toning in see why I keep this really simple and shade that through in the direction <clears throat> top of the lip and through here Remember this rhythm. We're going to see this a lot as we go deeper. We're going to go deeper into the head and the detail, the eyes, nose, the ear, and the mouth. See this rhythm coming in through there. That's going to be important later. And it's the downward trend of the lip. 
and we're trimmed to the upper lip. Nice rich full lips in through here, and then I can deviate, bring this down, full bottom measurement and through there, and that gives a more accurate portrayal of our model. Okay, so let's move on to another. So we see Sydney here in almost profile. She's not quite, let me tell you why. If we saw her in true profile, remember we would have that square, that rectangled square. We would have this, which is a little bit shorter, and then we would come down her gesture of her head, which would be just slightly longer than right on this side, which would make this kind of a rectangled area with this right in the middle, which would be her eye line, center of her eye. But we don't quite see that, do we? What we really see is her slightly pushed and looking off in that direction. So I think that's important to make sure that you see. And it's almost profile, but not quite, as we, as we continue our drawing study. So let's bring her over here now and uh, let's do another one. And so the first thing I'll, I'll get is the, the shape of the head. And so we've got very roundness, a lot of roundness in through here. And sometimes I'll just complete kind of this round, what I feel like is a round circle. And then I'll start to bring down her, the end of her face line in through here. It, it tends to arc. See that arc just a little bit? It tends to arc like this. That's my guide. And I'll find where I feel like the bottom of her chin is, about right in through here. Now, I'm looking, when I start to draw, I want to get this side and this bottom side. I kind of take a measure in my mind, this diagonal line. See from the bottom of the chin, that angle, the, the back of her head and her hair? See how that makes a nice connecting line? I'm looking for those diagonal connectors as well. So if I can find those, hooray for me, because that helps. And I hope, hooray for you, because that helps too as well. So there's the back of her hair, not her cranium. The back of the cranium is about right in through here with an extra little hair bulging in this direction. So break it down into, into some uh, shape forms. Now we can bring down the extra part of the neck in through here and down. And then we can bring down the back of the head in through here and over, connect this through, and then we can move on to a little bit of the shoulder there, and then of course down over to the other shoulder on the other side. Just a couple of lines will get us that. All right, so let's, let's look at why this is not quite profile. Well, number one, in true profile, we would only see this part of the eye, right? Well, here we see a little bit of both eyes, so we know that we're not quite in profile. I would call this seven-eighths view. That means we're almost seven-eighths to profile. Alright, so let's figure, let's find this out. So the first thing I'm going to look for is I can still find my eye line. Half, just roughly halfway down. Slightly angled, not horizontal, but slightly angled. See that? That's going to be important to find. So there's the center of my eye line, what I think it is. And then I'm going to find the back of her eye pushed over a little bit. Right in through there, there's the side plane of the head. Right in through there. Okay? And so I can start to feel this cranial roundness here. And I can start to feel this cranial roundness moving in through in this direction, which is going to help me locate the ear later on. So bring that down. There's the back of the ear. And the jaw is going to come through even further. So we get some rounded quality to there. All right, so, which I'll start to fin uh, kind of finish out and through here. We'll come down a little rounded and through there, and then we'll get down and get to that chin a little further. So we've got the eye line. That means we can start to hit our brow, which is a little bit above that there. Okay, I hope you see that. There's our brow line, nice and protruded. We see that on everybody, even more so in men. So I can come back and kind of catch her hair too. So it starts to, when I start to, when you start to find a few measurements, you're like, ah, oh, 
it's like a Goldilocks moment, meaning that you, you can start to gather your information for just about everything else. And it starts to come together pretty quickly. So this is on an angle. Remember that. It's not straight across. That's important to find. So bring down the hairline over to here. It's arched nicely. And then it starts to cascade, follows the cranial structure around and through to open up to the face. And then we're down to, we get closer to the, the ear right in through there. So that feels pretty, I'm pretty confident about where that's, that's winding up and where I, I feel with that. Okay. <clears throat> now, I don't want to get too complex, so i got to watch myself. Let's find the center line. The center line in profile, remember, is the face, the true center line to the outer, outer edge. Well, she's got a center line I mean, right through the brow. So this is the center of the brow through here. Now, that's going to extend out. The tip of the nose will extend out further. This, but the true center, we cut through that, right in through here, down and over, and we'll bring that through to her chin. Because you'll see the chin protrude out like everybody's would, right in through, right in through there. Okay. So we have our center line in through there so we can bring our brow over. It's a little higher, a little elevated, right in through here. And it plunges downward and that gets us to that nice temporal lobe, which is slightly shaded right in through there. I'll keep this drawing pretty light in through there. So we have our center of our eye line in through here. Now I'm just going to start to really simplify this cut in here. Okay, cut over, cut down to where that brow would be. So I'm drawing the eye socket. Remember the other, the other studies that we did is we'll just simplify all this to see how this is a connection in through here. This is a connection right in through there. This in ending of the eye socket in through here. Nose coming in right in through that center line. Okay, so the bottom of our nose, center, right through here, this is where the bottom would feel, about right through there. That's the bottom where the nostrils kind of end, right in through there. Now, the top of the nose, or the ball of the nose, is pushed out higher. So if I gave you the angle, okay, see the difference? That's how I'll find those measurements. Gotta be careful with the bottom of the nose in through here. So let's find let me be a little bit more detailed in through here, so I'll keep it just real simple. Right in through there. This is going to come out. So let's find now the, we can hit our cheekbone a little further, so it's wide, pushed out nicely. Okay, in through here. See how this angles and comes back down in through there. Better measure of our cheekbone in through here. So let's find the bottom of the bottom lip. So halfway from here to here to there, halfway down, is the bottom of our bottom lip right in through there. It feels pretty good. Not we can always adjust it from what we need. So we can start to feel this cheekbone coming down and in. We can start to feel this in through, through here which will help kind of form and line up over here to find the end of that. We can start to see the mouth coming down and in through here. End where that bottom lip is, it pulls in this way, or top lip pulls in this way, and bottom lip starts to emerge. You're always going to get this kind of indention, this overlap. So her top lip there and the bottom lip coming over pushes over. So we start to see that emerge. And I feel like we can push this chin in a little bit. And we have this curve in through there. And so we're getting closer to finding and getting ready to add even more detail, which I don't want to do. And let's get the bottom in through here a little fuller in this direction. So we got this this part of the lower part of the neck coming in. Okay, and then lastly, let's add a little bit more of the hair, make that a little bit more fuller through here. Okay, and through there. And then let's find a little bit of her ear now, since we're pulled in seven eighths, 
let's find out how we can find that. So one thing I do is I'll take a look at when I'm over here and I feel confident about this, I'll kind of like I'll bring the, the intersection of the lips. I'll bring that over a straight line where the lips meet. And it kind of I feel like that's where the bottom lobe is. So it's a little pushed up from or downward, excuse me, from the bottom of the nose in through here, which would take us back in through there. So we're brought right in through here and we're pushed lower than the brow. So how you see how this can you have to deviate off your standard model. So it's in between the brow and it's pushed down below the nose and through here. So I feel like we're now about center of the eye line, which was about right in through here and then over. And we can find her ear. You're going to deviate off of your standard model much more than you than you realize because you're going to get in not to, in these perfect poses that the standard model was really developed on. It is a tool to use in change as per your vision. Rely on what you know and what you start to see and then you merge those two important ideas together to give you drawing information and harmonize these disparate parts so we can bring a little bit of that eye coming over the socket and through there. Okay, there we go. Let's go on to one more with super cool Sydney here. Okay, this is perfect because now we have a true profile uh, of uh, Sydney here. So we can see how this one at 7 eighths compares to uh, I'll put P for a uh, profile and how that's going to look uh, different than in which of these is harder to draw. Well, okay, if you know, just starting out, I'd say both are. Drawing, there's nothing easy in drawing, right? But I would say that um, ultimately, all things considered equal, the 7 eighths head would be much more difficult to draw than, than profile. Profile is flatter. Remember, it feels a little bit more like this. Okay. And it's nice and flat, whereas 7 eighths is this. And there's your big difference. See the difference? That is, that is a difference. All right, so let's work with this profile shot. So remember we're, and she's a little, even a little bit more shorter now in her, her profile at the top in here. So she's a little bit, and it gets wider out through here and through here. But as we come down, it gets even, even longer. So that's kind of what I see her as right in through, right in through there to there. So let's take a look at that. Let's go deeper. All right, so we'll start in with the head. And so, you know, with the head, I kind of always kind of start at the back of the head. I don't know why. Everybody gets into a standard thing that they do. And you kind of break that habit. So you just don't know why. I guess it's just you figure out that's really the way your brain works and you start to work it. So we'll work through here. Then we'll work down. So I'm working down the profile of the head coming through. And see how it protrudes out? And the nose is going to protrude out even further. So I'm getting that profile line or her gesture line here. Nice gesture down, down through this direction, right? And so I'll feel like what I hit is the bottom of the chin in through here. And then I can come back, a lot of times I'll come back again and I'll go for this angle to the back of her head and see how it's already different than the other seven eighths and through here. And then I'll get this feeling, roundness of the, the more fullness of this part of her neck in through here, okay? And then down on through, and then we'll get her shirt coming in in this direction, and then over. All right, so let's see how we did and see what we've got to work on. So I can start to feel this cranial form, the top egg part, right, of the cranium. We can feel that more around us. If you draw this, it, it already starts to aid you in your feeling of roundness. So. We, we can measure now or feel the top of the head, the very top of the head, right in through 
here, right? And we can start to feel the bottom of the head, which it ends at the chin, bottom of the chin. We can start to feel that less perspective to have to worry about and deal with. So we've got that. Now let's start to find the eye. So the end of this egg, right in, in through here, right? That's, it helps us. Yep, that's about halfway, halfway down. So we found that. Now we can bring, if you will, let's bring down her profile a little bit further and let's start to bring down now the brow, which is slightly above it. Okay, so we'll bring down that brow. And notice how once we hit the brow, the head wants to come in this direction. So it comes out and then it comes in. That's protrusion of that brow. You always want to get that, even in profile. So we come in, okay, and see what this, this protrusion is. Of course, the eye, the eyeball, if I draw a little circle for the eyeball, will sit kind of in the center of that. Here's her eyeball about right in through there. And then we can find the side plane of the head behind it. See where it starts to get shadowy? So the end of the eye, the start of the eye, the end of the eye over here where it flaps over, okay? And then there's that white shadowed area, lighter area, right behind it where it gets darker. That's, the, that's where the side plane of the head starts. It's hard to find, but you've got to find it. And there's where her side plane of her head is right in through there, which helps lead us nice and, and dramatically to the end of the head, the egg, but also to the ear, right, right over and through that direction as well. So, you can start to feel that hair hub a little bit higher. We'll come down a little bit lower to get her hair pushing out and through in this direction. Okay, so I'll, I'll put on the hairline through here. Play with those angles a little bit, adjust. And then the hairline will be about right in through here, up and over, it cascades over, comes over a little bit, because it's got to go on the other side, right? And this comes down. We'll keep that simple. Through and come down a little bit. That gets us to a little bit of, not really a sideburn, but the ends where running through there where it could get to the ear. Now, so from the center of our eye, right in through there, bottom of our neck, our chin, excuse me, right in through there, what are we going to need to find? Well, we're going to need to find the bottom of the nose. So halfway, right in through there would be where the bottom of the nose sits. And so notice where the nostril sits, how far out. So we kind of curve out a little bit. There's where the end of the nostril is, the bottom of the nostril. But now look where the nose starts up high here in the brow. Comes right into the brow through there, the angle of the pencil. And then I'll find that planar angle, just that nice angle. She's not here. It's not lower than. It's a nice, comfortable position right in through here. Here's the end of the nose. Kind of a hub, a rounded sort of hub. So this makes a curve coming in that direction. Okay. And then we can kind of come down. We'll keep this simple. Come down in that direction. Over and through. It gets us to the philtrum area. Okay. Now, let's feel the cheekbone out just a little bit. Let's feel this through, this through this plane and through here. Okay. We'll feel that. We'll start to feel this undercut of the brow a little bit so we can feel that as a dimensional object and through. Put a little shadow on that so you can see that. Alright, so let's feel this cheekbone in through here, this downward sort of trend in this direction. And then we can also feel her jawbone coming in through here, from the ear, through and around. You can feel that rhythm in through. Can't you start to feel that hopefully? through and through there. You can start to feel that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the back of her jaw, and I think that's important now as we relate this part to this part. So they all relate together. So since she's fuller in this direction, it's harder to find. So you've got to know where these things occur about halfway through. That's the back of the ear. And on down slightly angled, then we can start to feel her jawbone. Start to come in and over slightly underneath. The neck is the roundness, fullness in through there. About right in through here. And it's going to get us to the chin where we lose that line a little bit. And then we pick it up right under here. 
that bony protrusion so the chin even though she's full into here that chin stays pretty bony right especially right in through that area then we can start to bring the hairline over and through like so now bring in her shirt okay now let's find our lip line bottom of we need the bottom of the lip so let's also take a measure the tip of the nose barely barely in front of the chin right just barely this chin could go out still we bring down a straight line still a little bit further very pronounced very nice features in through here okay so now let's bring out and find from the bottom of the nose the bottom of the chin roughly the bottom of the bottom of the lip about right in through there yep so this comes in right in through there is where she protrudes through okay so that helps guide you in your drawing practice to find where these forms are now this lip is going to protrude out nicely through here and over now I'll draw the top which cascades curves in this direction then back on through very nicely Remember, this whole area is a ball, so we'd fill this whole area right in through about here, round, round. So this curves around this whole area. This whole system is curving and going down, and it wants to come back around. So this whole area, I'm thinking about the ball right in through here. Let me get that back on the screen so you can see it ball curving around so this whole area curving or curving down if I need to curving down in that direction which I think is really important to see so we can kind of clean up this lip area just a little bit not that important for now for our study now but we'll get into that through here coming down a little fuller so I can go a little fuller and that's a better measure for where she's at there okay and bring this down a little bit further and then lastly let's put on the ear so from the brow in between the top of the brow line and the bottom of the nose let's see where her ears fall and so she's lower than the bottom of the nose she's about where the lip connection comes in through here this comes down so about right in through here and over just a little bit and then the top of the ear is about where the center of their eye, her eye is, right in through. So a little bit lower than. So everybody's going to deviate some. Know your standard model and then deviate as per needed. So she's got a nice C shape going on with the ear. Just keep it simple and it's protruding in through there.